hate to say it to ya, hate to break it to ya, but we ain't gon' make it cause this just ain't no true love. Uh -huh. Yeah, we started out as friends, uh -huh. parked out in my bins, yeah. and on my windows 10, so we start to get it in. <laughs> Fast forward, now we arguing again, again and again and again, and again. over every little thing. I'm, I'm like, like when, when will it end? Something told me get to rolling, pack your shit and hit the 10. So that's just what I did, yep, I slid up out that bitch, but before I hit the road, at least I leave a little note. Like to hear it, hear it go. Bitch, don't choke on my smoke, cause I'm gone. Cause I'm gone. Adios. Adios. Am I partially or hardly sorry? No. Bombing knows. Gotta go. Gotta go. Welcome back to season six of The Les Factor. So happy you joined us again. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. If you don't like it, subscribe anyway. All right, to my <laughs> left, we have Shelly Shell. She is a stand up comedian and host of Let's Talk Radio. We have Brandy Kane. She's a dope man's daughter. Check out her albums, all available on YouTube and iTunes. We have Stoney. She is the owner and creator of Stuzo, which is where we are filming right now, 4751 West Washington. Come shop here or online. We have Gary. She is a home goddess and homemaker. Yes, we have those in the lesbian community. There are people who just be at home making food. <laughs> to the right of her, we have Brown Brum is the creator of Truth 985. Follow her on Instagram for her fashion line. We have Lynette. She is the host of Politic and Lynn. Anything you need to know the real about, she got you on TikTok. Because, you know, the news be fake. So to my right, we have Simone. She is a creator and model. And let's get into it. So this episode is about Let's Go Out. So the first question was, LA, ah, it's more of a statement because they're rude. The first uh, statement question is, LA lesbians are clicky and fake. How do y'all meet people and make friends in this city? Shelly Shell? That is not an aerial thing. That is a personal thing. People who cannot be with themselves and have a good time do not associate that with LA. Um, there are clips everywhere you go. Uh, that's because people have to run the packs when they have to. But when you're a boss, you could just be by yourself. And most people from who are from LA, not the not the transplants, right, are bosses. So shout out to the LA people. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> So like trivial, really, I guess, but yeah, just gather up your own little crew. Shit, make your own clip. That's what I say. Fuck them. It's fuck them. Stoney? I noticed that. Yeah. Being from New York, yes, I have noticed that. Um, I think maybe it's because LA is like spread out. So, you know, it makes sense. Um, but I, you know, going to all the, I've been here for what, 11 years, going to the clubs in WeHo, I mean, it's very clicky. I mean, and then even people, when they promote, they promote their own click. And I'm just like, well, I was at the party, so where's my, <laughs> you know, I done came and showed out. And then here you have your own people on there. So I get that. Um, and like I said, maybe it is because things are so spread and like, you know, and more, um, you know, like closer proximity cities or whatever like New York, it's like, we're not clicked up. I mean, it's just, you know, we're not afraid to talk to people. So that's another thing too. Like, I think, I think women here can just come out in their box a little bit and, you know, just come out the click and, and just be more, not aggressive, but just, just come out and just talk to people more. You don't have to be like, oh, you know, go talk to them or, or I'm just dealing with this. And then everybody's dating everybody around the thing like that's you know everywhere that's every lesbian in every city that's everybody true, that's true, everybody true so let me not go there but yes um, <laughs> don't play but us. yeah, it's yeah. A, it, i think it's a geographical thing you know um and i mean maybe you know the stereotypes come from somewhere um so i think that it, it's true to a certain degree uh but it has the the ability to change and also i think it's, it, to your point what i've noticed is like my friends that I have here that are from LA are very different from the ones that are transplants. Yep. Like LA people are very like more real, yep. you know, and things like that. So mm -hmm, yeah, she's like, I don't know to say, but right. <laughs> and, and lastly, what I noticed because I was like trying to find my tribe for years, and and even black people for years being here, and what I realized is that when I got myself right, then I started to attract the people that I wanted to attract. And when I wasn't, I was attracting the people that were the vibration that I was in. So yeah. really, if you get your shit together or your you, your soul right, you'll attract exactly where you are. That, that's what I'm Garia, saying. what was it again? <laughs> people in LA are clicky and fake. Where do y'all meet people out here? Oh. Well, I've heard from people 
people that aren't from LA, like I have friends that live in other states and they do say we're clicky, especially the studs are clicky. Um, but I guess a lot of my friends I've known for a million years. So the club, you meet people at the club. When you're drunk in the bathroom, you see another pretty girl, you say, hey girl, you know, I guess just conversation, right? Um, as far as like where you meet people, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm not really on the scene like that, as like far as like going to clubs and stuff like that. Um, like I've told most of you guys before, uh, I haven't been big in the gay community. Um, that's something that I do want to change. So maybe uh, moving forward, I will see some of the clicking and all that stuff like that. But, <laughs> Not the clicking, I mean, some of the clicking. <laughs> some of the clicking, but um, I mean, I don't know. I think I think just like everybody else said, I think you just kind of like have to do your own thing. Find your, if, if you're worried about a click, then find your own crew. If you're cool with going by yourself, then that's, that's even better. But yeah, that's how I feel. Lynette? Uh, I think that, first of all, I don't like most people. <laughs> that's this for me but let's like talk about everyone I think that um, people from LA they're from LA so they're like doing stuff like working having businesses and, and, and people that come here they're like oh I'm trying to experience LA and everybody from LA is like I live here you know what I mean yeah, like, and they're right. not really too concerned about that so sometimes you don't meet in the same space but just like being in a relationship with someone who is a transplant and like going into these other spaces, people be shocked. Like, oh, you're from LA? What do you be doing? Uh, I don't know. I be going to work and stuff. I be in LA. Like, I be in LA. Like, yeah. what do you be doing? They be like, well, I be at this party event. I be this. I be doing this. Like, you know. Yeah, so they know sometimes how to find everything. they know how to find right. things. And I feel like LA people is not that. You know, they do have their clicks, but that's just because that's the people that they fuck with. Yeah. And it's just, you can't fuck with everybody. So it's like, they fuck with the same people. Yeah. And then it's like, well, y'all all clicked up. Well, I don't know you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know me? Like, you know what I mean? so like, that's the LA standpoint for me. Smoke? Well, I'm from here. And I grew up in West Hollywood. Like, my high school and everything. So, a lot of the people that are in the scene, I've known for years. Um, my godmother, Michelle Triple X, rest in peace. Um, she was a trailblazer in our community. So, and for us, specifically for us. So I guess word of mouth and just knowing people and you know, that's for me at least. Yeah, I find that the people who come here and complain, maybe the people yeah. who thought they was gonna come here and be famous or something. Thank like, you. <laughs> I met one girl, she was like, I was at a lesbian event and she was just like, oh, you don't know who I am? No. <laughs> she was like, oh, I came, you know, I was part of a famous YouTube lesbian couple, and you know, we were pretty famous if you were in the community. I was like, that's it. Uh, I've been, in, I've been in the community and I'm from LA. I that's still have not heard of you. Yeah. Like maybe you're popular in the Midwest. <laughs> like, but not here in LA. Like she legit was like, oh, you've never heard of us. You must not be in the community. I'm like, you must not be from LA. I've been in the community. I grew up here. I, mean, I, I, I was flying across country to come home. Like Peanuts was my first club. I flew from Virginia when I went to college to LA on my 21st birthday because I was going to Peanuts, okay? So like I've been in the community for a minute. But she just was felt so entitled. I feel like people move here who are not from here expecting like like open welcoming arms. Like yeah, we don't yeah. know who you are and we don't care. The problem is I think it's not so much that we're clicky, it's so much that we don't care about what you got going on. Because we don't know you. <laughs> okay. Right. So right. clicky if you want to. The LA people I've known have been the realest people I've met Thank and I've you. been friends with for the longest. So that's just my opinion on it. I just feel like People come here like, oh, hi, welcome to the city. And like, this is not a welcoming wagon. This is Hollywood. Yeah. Like, y'all are playing. Yeah. Welcome lesbian wagon. Somebody else asked on this Let's Go Out episode, has COVID changed how you date? What's different? Like, did you get stuck living with an ex? Is being unvaccinated a deal breaker? Mm-hmm. Shelly? Uh, COVID was interesting. I was actually dating someone during COVID. And it was interesting because, like, uh, she caught COVID. And the conversation we had was like an STD conversation. She was like, yo, I gotta, I need to talk to you about something. And I was like, yo, I'm thinking like, yo, what's up? Like, you, what's good? Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, I like hairy pussy. So I was like, scared. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what's good? So she was like, yeah, um, she had a mask on it. Like her, her window was all the way up. And I was like, yo, babe, what you, what's popping? She's like, yo, I got, I got COVID, so I need to, you know, quarantine. And I was like, damn, that's just scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. I thought she had chlamydia, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it was just a serious, like, damn. So COVID did, COVID opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like, even though 
I tried not to believe in COVID. It was like, damn, there's a lot of shit going on around here. <laughs> you tried not um, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to believe, but um, <laughs> uh, it definitely, it, it did. And then I started shaming people. I started mask shaming. shaming. <laughs> I did. I did. And that's, that's, that's I regret. I, I, I'm not, I'm not that person anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't have the N95, I still accept you. Um, but I was like, oh, y'all, like, you know what I'm saying? That like, she no like, mask oh, protected you. You could tell with somebody being running down in their mask. It's like, yo, I, I can't, I can't fuck with this. So yeah, it did change everything for me. Brandy? No and no. <laughs> no, you didn't get stuck with nobody and no, it didn't change nothing about what you do. No. Okay. Stoney? Um, in the beginning of COVID, I was actually in a relationship, so we quarantined a lot, and at first it was amazing because, you know, we got to know each other. We uh, spent a lot of time, obviously, together. Um, uh, it brought us closer together, but we did stop having sex, so that was... <laughs> so y'all were roommates. But that wasn't because of COVID, yeah. We turned, <laughs> we turned into roommates for sure, and... Um, you know, for me, I was just like, yeah, maybe we should just like, um, you know, you go back to your house and we have some space because then maybe there's too much, too much of this. And I, I know that even from experience, like space is healthy, you know, like, let's do that. Um, but it, it, I thought it was going to eventually like bring us together, but it did not. Um, and and I, I welcome it because everything happens for a reason. And then now, now for me, moving forward, um, it's just, this now it's like another thing. Like, it's like an STD. Like, you can't just be out here, you know, <laughs> just talking to people. And, 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 add that to the list. You got to think about that, you know? And it's like, it's hard for us to catch things, but that's something that, that's like a universal thing. And also, I did not believe in COVID when I first <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like a, a probably a, Conspiracy theorists. 70, 80% conspiracy theorists. And then, you know, um, unfortunately, I did catch that bullshit. And I was like, so it's real. All right. <laughs> All right. My lungs are collapsing. I can't breathe. It's nothing, man, nothing thankfully, real. it wasn't even nowhere that bad. Um, but it's now I have a different way of, like, approaching. One, I'm not even looking or dating or nothing like that. But when I do open myself up to that, that's now something that I'm going to consider. Yeah. Like, are you COVID negative before we even go on the date? COVID negative. Yeah, you know, and vaccinated. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get the shit. You know, I don't want to, but I'm gonna get it. Um, and I don't, I don't care if you're vaccinated or not. As long as you don't have it, I'm good. And in addition to that, any STDs? Because let's not forget. <laughs> let's not forget about that. Like that's still a thing. Is that a first aid question? It might be. You know, I'm very direct. So it might be a thing. One for sure is, are you negative? Before you show up to this, I want to see a negative thing. I'll show you mine gladly. We could, you know, do that. And then we could move on. And then I, I'm going to get into your business of like, when's the last time you had sex? When's the last time you went to go get yourself checked out? I think that's before COVID, something we need to be talking about. Yeah. Gary, the question was, has COVID changed the way you date? Or is, and is vaccinated or unvaccinated a deal breaker? Well, I'm married, and we're both vaccinated, so that's it. <laughs> Brown? Uh, I'm sorry, say it one more time. But if I was single... <laughs> if, you were single. if I was single, yes, I would want to date somebody that's vaccinated. That, that would just be my preference. The question was, has COVID changed the way you dated? Did you get stuck living with a COVID bay? And is vaccinated <laughs> or unvaccinated a deal breaker? <clears throat> Um, I guess I'll go backwards. That, um, being vaccinated is not a deal breaker for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not here to tell people what they should and what they shouldn't do with their bodies. So that oh is your God. choice. Oh, but you, but Harry um, put you in that that is <laughs> <laughs> So they can't grow hair. Right. 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 You should understand. Okay. Don't do it. Don't call her. No. With no. some exception. No. With some exception. No. With some exception. No. Um, I was in a relationship before COVID, uh, still in one now, didn't really change anything, so. What that? Same, I was in a relationship, and now I'm still in a relationship. I do think it, like, it's so crazy to be two professional people, like, working from home together, like, you know, and just, like, growing through that space, because no one experiences that. 
Like, this is why it's true love. <laughs> because at the end of the day, like, you're here with me every day. Like, I get off from work, you're here. I'm starting work, you're here. Like, I'm, whatever's happening with me, you're, you're here. here. <laughs> and at the, you know what I mean? And, the, and to be in a space where, like, you really still, like, have, like, real genuine love for somebody, like, in that space, it's, it's really a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't know. It just worked out. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out so I think if you can survive that yeah I mean, it's, it, that's like next level living together yeah if you've got a quarantine because you're also stressed yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so have all the stresses so. of like so, love so, of like work so, and so, yeah. <laughs> emotionally like yeah. whatever you're going through it's like hey it's there i'm here with you because <laughs> <I'm laughs> <me. laughs> yeah, then we working through this together so i just think it's it's you know, I'm thankful. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. I was with somebody before quarantine. I'm not with them anymore. Uh, it changed a lot. A lot. I really like you dive into like what ticks people really when you're living with them, you know, um, you know, to the fucking toothpaste being rolled up mm-hmm. but like <laughs> where's the cap like yes. you know all of this yeah, but yeah you have to um <laughs> you have to <laughs> um but even now like for let's say like dating and stuff i don't want anybody in my house like <laughs> yeah. i really don't want nobody in my house like we can meet somewhere in public and stuff like that but like you're not sitting on my couch you're not touching my dog <laughs> like yeah that's how i've kind of been like yes yeah. that's just gross that's like, how okay. i've been my house like, is nice I don't want you yeah to take off yeah. your shoes that's always been a thing but nothing else for real like no take off your shoes. dragging that covid up in this house yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't think that vaccinated versus unvaccinated is a deal breaker for me I mean, I'm vaccinated, my girl's vaccinated, it's fine. But I didn't know she was vaccinated until after we started dating, so. <laughs> uh, but for me, I had already caught COVID, plus I got vaccinated, so I didn't really give a fuck after that. So not a deal breaker. And then as far as like the change for dating, I was single uh, entering COVID and I caught everything last year. <laughs> so like, I caught the chicken pox, I had caught the tunnel, I caught COVID, so I didn't give a fuck. I was like, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So like, after I got the chicken pox, that don't even happen no more. <laughs> At 40, I was like, fuck it. So I was, I was on every flight. I'm like, oh, this flight like $20? I was on it. This flight like $25? I was on it. We going to Mexico? I was on it. So, like, zero fucks. Because I'm like, if I can catch chicken pot, I don't care. It's, if someone's coming for you, it's coming for you. Like, hey. You know what I'm saying? People are like, what kids that. you kicking with? I'm like, I don't kick with no fucking kids. Right. I don't even kick with nobody in the 30 if I can help it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I met like three people during COVID. Um, they were vaccinated. It was whatever. And so. I had a COVID test yesterday. So, you know, COVID didn't really change anything except for now I'm like, damn, all my friends are couples because they're all stuck with their base. So I guess I got to find a girlfriend. And that's what happened. So. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> She's great. Shout out to the girlfriend. Yeah, shout out. Yay. 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 Damn, I lost the question. So where'd it go? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you so the, next, <laughs> the next question was, black lesbian spaces are far in between. What do you wish was out there for the community? Like, where? what would entice you to go out? Mm-hmm. Shelly. Oh, oh, this is this is what I really want. Uh, <laughs> like a healing space, right? Uh, for uh, somewhere where we could be uh, seen and loved and held, and uh, we could talk about our traumas and unpack things. Oh, and, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and be sincere with each other. You got held. So the last factor, there you go. Yeah, that's what I really want. I want a space for us to, to, to be vulnerable. Oh, Brandy, you have any words for us this question? I want a, a club right in the damn hood. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Going to West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, long live the catch. But yeah. that has gone through some changes and... It's no longer owned by us. And that was um, always mixed. You know, mm-hmm. and, all, and you may argue it was more of a... a a guy club, you know, it was always like kind of more, you know, more boys in there than girls. Like, I don't know, but it was always mixed. But as far as like something exclusively black lesbian, I would just love to see a, a black lesbian space, like in the black community, actually. And where we don't have to travel outside of 
the majority of the black community to go experience some. Let's blood. figure it out, y'all. You know, like I said, you know, let's get. Let's figure it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna MC. We don't have to go to West Hollywood because I'm we don't in. own shit over there, and we don't even really live over there like that. So. We don't even want to be over there anyway. Every year, we're traffic and no yeah. parking. Yeah. We really want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I would like to <laughs> see. Something in the hood, something yeah. local for like mm -hmm. right here in South Central. Yeah, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Stunning. I think those two are, are important too. I would love to see that. Um, and something that's open seven days a week, please. Because I don't want to have to just go to a party <clears throat> one day. You know, I want to just go in, get a drink, maybe do work, you know. Just, and I know that I'm amongst people of color that are queer under the umbrella. I, it can be lesbian, it can be whatever. <laughs> just, yeah. just know that, you know, this is a queer space, it's safe, and, but for, of color, I really, that is important. Queer, of color, and then everything underneath. But it's just something that's seven days a week because not, and not everybody wants to party, you know, um, one day or not everybody just wants to party. Maybe I just want to go, you know, like I said, just go get some coffee or something or whatever it is that you like. So something like that, you know, and just more things for black queer people, period here. You know, I think that's what we need. And I'm down to, to create these spaces. Gary? Yeah. Um... I would like an upscale black lesbian club that gives you the vibe of like the West Hollywood club, but gives you the music of the hood club. <laughs> <laughs> because yes. I don't like the hood clubs. You want the fist ratchet club. Right. <laughs> because I, I want to be able to wear my red bottom. I want to be dressed up when I go to the club. I mean, I know I'm older, so back in the days we dressed up to go to the club. Now they just go. Like, they just, I feel yeah. like that's an LA thing because I'm always really? overdressed to, to I'm always overdressed to t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. And they'd be like, I'm oh, you I'm can't sure dress you're a fashion up. designer. That's not, well, that's also, not New fair. York, this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Excuse you, I've been to Henrietta Hudson, which is the only lesbian club I know in New York, and they okay. dress like whatever that's the hell. Henrietta Hudson. It's white run. <laughs> White people dress differently than black people. So you already know from the beginning of the time, we already, we used to show out because we felt like we didn't have anything, which at some point we didn't. So that's why we dress like this. Always so fresh. If you went to Love Girl, or you went to um, Heaven, or you went to other places where it was Latin or black, then you would find your people and you'd find fashion. Henrietta Hudson, I mean, like that's all one of Henrietta Hudson here, but black. Because then you're going to see a fashion. Now when I say in the hood, I don't mean ghetto on the inside. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just get on the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just occasional. I don't know where you live at, but, you know, uh, <laughs> South Central is now, South LA is being yeah. very much, you know, uh, there's a lot of attempts at gentrification. So, so um, South Los Angeles. Yeah, uh, so you know, so uh, so there's, 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 there's room. There's room for some high-end shit like Crenshaw. Yeah, my thing is with the clubs in the hood, they need to be nicer, and I don't want to have drink tickets. I want to go to the bar and get a drink. <laughs> or I want to get bottles. Where do you think you're from? I had a drink ticket. Back in the day, they would have the whole club. When was the last time you went out? It's been a while. Okay. But, because I don't, I, I try not to patronize those. But, I get what you're saying. It's a lot of gentrification going on. So if they had something really nice and clean <laughs> and <laughs> safe, <laughs> Safe. Good music, mm -hmm. black lesbians. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because right. I don't want to go to West Hollywood where they don't really give a fuck about yeah, my money. But yeah. I want a nice environment and a clean restroom. That shit's gorgeous. You know, the little things in life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clean restroom. Yes, that is. I don't want to Yeah, I don't want to hear that shit. Either. Um, <laughs> just to piggyback off of what you guys are saying, I feel I feel the same. Like it would be cool to have like a nice space where we can go and like enjoy ourselves with our people. Um, our music for sure, mm -hmm. like, and our our people playing that music, because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not trying to be rude or nothing, but I just feel like when an other is the DJ, it just doesn't come out mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to come out. Perfect. Like, <laughs> like we're in 2021, and they will have us in yep in my white tee. Yep, yeah. like, it was just like, yep. like nigga, like we don't want to hear that. You're right. So like we want to hear like what we hear, so what we listen to in our car. Right, we want to hear. I still bang. I mean, I still want to hear. No, here's the thing. It's okay to have. There, it's okay to have like a little segment of the 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 whatever's going on. But like, it's a cultural disconnect. You know, you know, you know exactly what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how to like kind of get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how to like kind of get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how to like kind of get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how to like kind of get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how to like
to keep it going. And I just feel like, I don't know when we've ever had that. Like I was going out to the club. So that would be like something great to see. And yeah, you know, we can yeah, I mean, put, like, yeah, yeah, put yeah, you missed it. But other than that, we don't have that many black DJs. The was something. Yeah, like, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cash. We had Cherry Pie. We had Peanuts. Oh, yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah, that was before your time. But Cherry Pie. You know, I really like about like I always be saying like Cherry. Black queer <laughs> people just need to come together in all their different spaces. Like, all these things are possible. I don't know why we think they're not possible or why we put these, like, you know what I mean? These walls up as to, like, we can't attain these things. Like, there's so many people that want to have a healing space. <laughs> they want, there's so many people that want to have a coffee shop where they can go do whatever they want, you know what I'm saying? At 11, 11 o'clock at night because they're really trying to meet a deadline. And there's so many people that want to have a space where they're like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to have a good time. I want to hear some music that I know I like, but I really want to be around my own people. And it's like, it's hard because I feel like just not even just LGBT, just black people in general. Like we do not understand like the power that we have, like mm -hmm. together, like just go meet other people that want to do that shit and just do it together. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're all sitting right here because there's different people that want to do something together with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's giving you your space. And there's different people that want to do things with you and you and you. And they all do those things. Like, just voice it. Like, we can have whatever space. I do think that we should have healing spaces. I think we have, should have a spa. Mm -hmm. yeah. My God. We just talking about Black that. people need a massage. That's what <laughs> we need. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, I think man. we should have a spa. Like, we definitely have a, you know what I'm saying? I want to go sit down. I want and like, even upscale. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I want to be sexy tonight. You want to be yeah, sexy tonight? Right. We going over here. You know what right. I'm saying? And that's what's so crazy. Like, even like when we talk, like, like they have the L word and everything. And like, the fuck they're part about that show. <laughs> it's like, Dana's is a great idea for whites but we, 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 we need somebody we need somebody to create you know what I'm saying like this is the club but like oh where, where are you at tonight oh we at Stuzo Stuzo is a club that you go to when you want to look fancy and you want to wear your sheer shirt like you did <laughs> you know what I'm saying like and it's like I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm the L in the GBT in this motherfucker tonight you know what I'm saying and, and, and all of that is possible if we just just stop focusing inward and being like myself, myself, and just realize like it's outward. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Well, can I say one thing? Yeah. Um, I think that that's true, but I also think that as Black people in Los Angeles, we have a lot of boundaries as far as real estate. So like in real that's estate, true. I might own a building. Brandy might say she wants to lease it, and I might be like, no, I'm gonna lease it to, for lack of better words, Becky. Because I feel like my property <laughs> is going to be safer with her than right, it is right. going to be with her. So I think that a lot of times people do voice that they want these things, but it's kind of hard to attain those things because of real estate and how people run their real estate. As far as leasing spaces for clubs and, you know, unless you buy it. Which is very expensive. Yeah, we got some crowd funding. We got some crowd funding. All of us back there. That's yours. Whoever want to no, see this shit, just like, talk about it. Yeah. No, I'm just the saying that. Like, 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 because why would you? Why would you not want to with her? Not just somebody, but I'm saying I think the root of all this is the conditioning that we have from our own people that was put on us. You know that we need to, and I think we've done a great job because look at us. We're here for this. And, and other things. I think we still have a long way to go that we need to know that doing things together is the best thing for us as a people to rise and not just like, oh, well, you know, thinking that the, the, the other is going to be the one that's No, going I'm to not be saying we should think that. I'm saying that that's probably what's, in, what's made it not as attainable as it could be. I mean, I, sold, I did real estate for a very long time, and I've had clients that wanted to lease spaces, and they don't want to do it. Because they feel like it's a bigger liability. It's not right. fair, right. but it's fact. Right. But the, the, so but that's the problem. Deeper than real estate. I, it's a, it's it a, does go deeper, deeper than that. Than that. I, mean, I would like to point out ladies. your yeah. space because mm -hmm. I've been here multiple times for really? many different events, actually. You said Yes, that? I was actually Did here for a therapy event. Oh, my God, I remembered you before. Um, <laughs> there was like an Ayaba series or something here oh, and really we did it. like a whole like, <laughs> meditation kind of thing mm, wow. everybody talked about why they were here mm. um, it was a group of girls from back east that came here mm. for something mm. and 
It was amazing. I sat right there on a pillow. There was incense and candles and everything. And it was amazing. I even, like, cried a little bit at, at some people's stories. You know, it was amazing. Um, something that I would like to see in our community is something for our youth. In our, in our, something for real for them too. Yes, I know boys. And yes, I, I was a part of something called Heart in the City where we were giving back to the homeless. You've been a part of it, and what we were doing was uh, going into high schools and uh, we were trying to contribute to the GSA programs, which is the Gay Straight Alliance programs, mm -hmm. um, and get kids out there because a lot of our community are on the streets. Right. You know, they get kicked out of their homes and all that. Um, so, yeah, I would like to see more youth programs for our kids. I said that just because nice. we need more stuff like that. We got a lot of it. It starts somewhere, and it's harder to change an adult's mind rather than a child's mind. Yeah. You can inspire a child. You can't, you know, you can just tell an adult something, and they just go, okay, uh-huh. You can still inspire just, an adult. Yeah, don't, you don't can, but it's harder. it's harder. It's harder. It's way it's harder. harder. It's way it's harder. harder. It's way harder. harder. We get stuck in our ways. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. does. Yeah. Everybody does. That, so, went, that went way deeper than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, oh, oh, yeah, I just, just want to party check my ass a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. We all do. We all do. Yeah. But yeah. I would like to create safe spaces right. yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say general. that this is an absolute safe space. And I, <laughs> no, seriously, yeah, no, totally. there's a lot of things that I've had and I want to do. And that if anyone ever wants to pitch anything or, or you know, have something here, I'm open. This is an open, safe space for, as you can see, you know. Yeah. So, anybody want to build on something that we Trying need to have to a party do? tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm also, I'm my day off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Monday's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I actually Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to have you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad, though, really. Y'all went no, so, so late. Late. I just look for something where I don't have to be like five years old. Like, so I, I go to the lesbian <laughs> parties that are being offered currently. Yeah. And there's like yeah. one promoter who like, you know, wants to be like the teenage triple X. Yeah. And you know, her parties, every time I go there, I feel like every single year of my age, like every single time I'll be like, cause you see everybody's ID in here. Cause everybody looks well. <laughs> I'm like, everybody got on biker shorts and tennis shoes. And I'm like, where are the grown women at? You know what I mean? I'm no, just right. looking for a space. They her spot. <laughs> right. I'm looking for a space. Cause it's like, I'm not gonna lie. So like there was a promoter who was having parties. So I would promote their stuff all the time just because it's a lesbian party or whatnot. But you know, somebody got killed at one of them. Uh -oh. So then after yeah. that, I stopped, I stopped reposting that shit. And it's like, they had two parties. One party had a big fight. And one of my cast members hit me up like, girl, I was there. They had a fight. Somebody got blood on my shirt. Cause oh, somebody got no. hit near me. The second time somebody died. I was like, yeah, can't promote that no more. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna say when I was a younger, like I used to, I went to Peanuts once and I saw literally girls fighting on the back of a police car. Yeah. Legit. They like, I don't give a fuck about the police being here. I'm still gonna beat your ass. Okay. There's been times where I stepped over a girl in the gurney to go to the catch. I was like, somebody was on a gurney coming down the stairs to the catch. Me and my friend were like, but can we get in? But I was in my 20s then. You know what I mean? So now I just want to go somewhere cute, maybe put on some some shoes, hard bottoms, you know what I mean? And listen to some good music. Like that's what like that's what I'm looking for. Something, some kind of alternative. More adult place. I'm looking for a place where grown people go. Yeah, okay. I agree. I agree. So that, that that's what I'm looking you for. So like a lesbian GS with a Please. twist. Higher yeah. than GS. <laughs> Way higher than GS. Yes. Yes. I've been there though, take it slow, right. Honey shit, but I've been there. There are black spaces that exist like that, but it's like queer people can't exist there right. uh, comfortably. Yeah. And right. that's that's a problem that we have to address in our own community that we haven't gotten to yet. But like yeah. I remember going to DC and it's probably one of the blackest places I've ever been in my life. Like just I was just like, oh my god, it was like Disneyland. Like, it was crazy. Like it was like this is amazing. Yeah. Right? But we went to this club and we were like, we got dressed and we like, you know, I'm thinking like I, I just think in the, the sense of Los Angeles, right? So we go to into this club. It's the blackest place I've ever been. I have a snap, swear to God, me saying that. Like, this is the blackest place I've ever been. <laughs> like, I've never experienced this, but, but everybody in there was in suits and dresses. See, see, and they just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the vibe is like, this is where we're at. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just 
real yeah. black. Yeah. This is like, yeah. I don't know, it's crazy in here. Like, when look at this guy. Club, this guy is doing the season. most, but he's in a suit. Yeah. And he's and, and yeah. everyone's being respectful, and everyone's just like vibing. And it's like, we can have that. Yeah, Chocolate City is amazing. Yeah. I definitely have had some good times in D.C. Straight gay, didn't matter. It was just black. Amazing. Blackly yeah. black. Music Blackity was good. Black. Everybody knew how to act. <laughs> Wasn't no fights. Yeah. I was just like, this is amazing. Right. So I definitely I definitely feel you, and we definitely yeah. create something. I think, lastly, the, the age limit, like, they got rid of that. And I remember when I was growing up, <laughs> I was like, no, 23 and over, like, 23 and over clubs. And all. I'm like, damn, I'm, I can drink, but I can't get into this club. Oh, but yeah, like, it was for a reason, because then when I turned 23, I understood I didn't want to be partying okay. with 21 year olds and certain things like that. So yeah. if there is a standard now still where I don't want to party with a certain age group, give it like, and I want it to be more like 27 or 30 and up, but <laughs> right. you know, it was more 25 or something that would have a standard for people, yeah. you know, where at least, you know, they're a little bit more mature. We will change the game up. We will right be promoting now. a party still with me and DJ AK47. Just oh. November. Okay. Oh. So anyway. Yeah, it's it's going to be a dress code. Uh, there used to be a dress code. You know? Yeah, right. No more dress code. I was going to bring that up too. You know, with code. the, the standards uh, of these emergence of, in popularity of bottle service, out with mm. the dress code. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. then, yeah, that's true. true. You don't have that's a certain true. vibe of people coming that's gonna, oh, I, I don't wanna fight in my good clothes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, it's, you can know, move. Yeah, you gotta move. But you what I'm move. saying is, right, the standard at the door, yeah. got, it dropped. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just I had the money. club in this shit right now. Yeah. 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 Translating to no black people. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? Yes. But exactly. even at the black right. spots, yeah. it still was yeah. none of this, nigga. We know what that shit means. Don't come here with that bullshit. Where you get, no. you get close I, tonight. Right. I, yeah. want, I want you to be so serious. Like, I just, I think it's okay. It's funny because it's like, it's okay to be serious about your standards. Like, it's like, yeah. listen, sir, you know where you can. You got a suit on, I love it. But these, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These are not it. You gonna have to try again, okay? Next week. And you could go right down the street. My nigga sells sneakers all day. Every day. You go get you some hard bottoms and come right back in here and have a good time. But you gotta be serious about that because people be serious Vegas. about that. That's some slides in the ice cake. Yeah. What you Facts. Facts. What kind of Facts. You gotta have a Facts. Facts. $10,000 table. They come to you gotta come with though. them heels on. I mean, them hard bottoms on. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or no t-shirt. I definitely yeah. lost, yeah. I lost yeah. a friend. They're the only people that don't care. I left a friend. I lost a friend. We went to the door. And I had on a collar shirt. We was in Vegas. You have to wear a collar shirt if you're going to be wearing something masculine. Yeah. She was wearing a t-shirt. I didn't know. She got in last. We was in there partying for like an hour. We're like, shit, where's that just match go? We lost them for like 12 hours. I don't know where they went. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but Vegas right. wasn't playing. They don't that play. Be all, me. All, all the people that get the dress how they want is whatever the artist is that's coming, up, coming on stage. All right. So that was a very serious uh, question. <laughs> and we're going to go just 180 to something don't, that didn't match shit else in the episode. Oh, wow. So there was a question between the cast in the back. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. And they said, "What's better, masculine or feminine pussy?" Let me know. Oh. We gonna start over here. Oh, no. you which one? Oh, you, you don't have no comparison like, though. No, I, don't I, mean, that was, was oh, yeah, I do have a comparison. I will compare it to my old shit. So, <laughs> I, I, this is a theory I have, right? Like, what's the theory? I don't know. This might be. Oh, we talking? Gotcha. No, I'm just, this is as honest. I haven't unpacked this. Bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> Like masculine presenting pussy is better because it just it haven't been tampered with as much. <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> <laughs> somebody took the seal off of it. Like what does that mean? Because <laughs> fans be flip flopping. Fans be like it. Wait, says flip flop too. Um, yeah, yeah, but not as yes, much. They do. Well, not as much. 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 It happens, but we don't have. on the other one. Oh, my and, God. And that pussy, like, and, I, and, and I've had relationships where we, you know, we come down and it's us here and it's just me and your pussy. And, and we have a comparison. And I'm not comparing because you know I fuck with Harry pussy. I'm not just <laughs> But her pussy is different because it's been through a lot more. <laughs> like, it's been through a lot more. And, and my pussy is just like kind of newbornish. <laughs> and, and I've gotten that. So that's just my opinion. That's just my, okay, Brandy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what you about to say. 
Uh, <laughs> first of all, yeah, I don't have no comparison. Yeah. I only fuck with films. <laughs> um, but I would kind of agree with what she said. <laughs> <laughs> it's no tea, it's no shade to your films, but it is, though. <laughs> That's just the truth. Y'all got kids and shit. Everybody know. <laughs> Well, I have had both and of the two or three that I've named that that wasn't like the freshest one was a, a friend <laughs> <laughs> and one was a, really aggressive that. whatever you know so there's no difference for me you know mm-hmm. it's like everybody's pussy is individual <laughs> Their own. And your own. Okay. Yeah, so it's about how you taking care of yourself so just come correct. I, it don't even matter what it is on the outside. It's really, really what's going on on the inside <laughs> yeah. coming out and all that. So, shit, keep it Gary, going. Gary, you, you got some comparison. <laughs> oh, you well, damn. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Um, I disagree with you too because I think that as a feminine woman, you can have, you can still, like, I've never been with a man, so I don't have that trauma, pussy, that y'all talking about. So, so I think that it depends on the feminine woman, per se. But I think if I have to base some feminine stuff, I mean, they all good. It's all, it's all good. They're the same. They're the same. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, it's, it's individual. It's person. It's not necessarily Oh, that's a stud pussy, so it's gonna be like this. You know, it's like, it's like this. you know a stud pussy when you see one. I do. <laughs> That's really ambiguous and unanswerable. Lynette? (laughs) I think that that, um, if we just take it out of that, pussy's picky. (laughs) Okay. Okay. And pussy's picky. Yes, pussy's picky. And I think that masculine women, right, um, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't do as much. So you probably are aroused with a little less. Right, because <laughs> this girl over here, she's experienced. She had a little, you know, maybe you have to do a little bit more. But pussy's picky. Like a lot of people, like yo, I feel like it responds to you, like you know, and what you're on. Like so, your pussy is probably a, a masculine pussy is probably, you know, phenomenal because it's like yeah, what, what you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Especially if you're a skill, Especially if you're a skill, because you're like, wow, this is amazing. But it honestly think that the it's it's based on you and the yeah, relationship the that you have with that. Cause that particular pussy. Yeah, because yeah, that pussy might not did that for the last time, but now it's giving what yeah. it's supposed to give. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> because you gave, but it was supposed to give what it was. Yeah. 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 What you said, yeah. Yeah. So it's now with the pussy. You know what I'm saying? So oh, you that's my pussy. That's what I said. Yeah. For sure. No, that's, that's, that's what I said. Hold on. What, what did you say? I said. I said it's the vibe with the pussy. I'm still skipping her, Simone. Well, I'm gonna have to uh, brum you then. Yeah, go ahead. I'll answer. Yeah. No, 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 you didn't. I want to hear this one. No, no, no. All right, all right. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, okay, okay. I've only had a lot of times. I've only had sex with two fans in my whole life, right? Okay, so <laughs> shut up. No, for it. So, um, I would say. It for me, it's not the pussy. It's more of like the I've dated touch me nots. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, oh yeah. that's not the so, same. So, yeah, well, I want to touch saying? some titties too. <laughs> like that's boring. Like, it, yeah. boring. So and like yes. then you can do whatever the fuck you want to do with them. So basically, so, so the feminine is better. Yes, I was. But that because you were able to touch it. Yes, because I was correct. Able, 
because there are more touch me nots that pussy ain't been touched. Okay, but That's still, I was the whole thing. Okay, <laughs> okay. 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 I got a couple of answers. I, I I had a conversation with a guy about this once, and he was telling me he liked like tomboys, and I realized that I was sexist because <laughs> I was like, "Why you like tomboys? Because they pussy ain't been fucked a lot like fems?" Right. And he was like, "No, because we do things in common. We play video games." I was like, "Oh, my bad." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That's just you." <laughs> I was like, "My bad." Um, which one is better? Mm, I don't know. I think it depends on what I've kind definitely of had experience with both. Yeah, depends on what kind of set and what kind of film. I'm going to go be better. Film is better. Yeah, of course. If they haven't had kids, sorry. Of course. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Listen, some of the best pussy I had was a woman. Well, you already, but you also already had your turn. You didn't say that. So, <laughs> what I said was. I didn't think about that. That was your shit. But they haven't had kids. It's a little better. These studs. I didn't say I didn't. The stud I was with had kids. And hers was not great. And the other one, oh, it was lion pussy, so I don't even know. I don't know that I judged that one. It was what pussy? Lion pussy. And she was, was on the strap. Lying. lying. Oh, lying. And she was oh. on the strap a lot. I thought she was straight, like a little bit. I was like, you straight? Because you on the strap a whole lot. So I don't know. I'm going to go with Fem. Fem has, Fem, 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 Fem. I've had, definitely had better, I better. Oh, no. <laughs> so see now, like, when I mention kids, I make them more in the, in the sense of, like, what is your sexuality? Right. Just. Like just I didn't. Know. I mean, what has your pussy been through? That's yeah, what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking like, oh, it just fuck up the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the pussy is a muscle. It can bounce back. All that. It's yeah, yeah, they say it can bounce back. Then why they sold it back together? I'm just saying. Kids, nobody's saying your pussy is trash forever. Forever. Pussy is better than masculine pussy because all the masculine what? women I've been with. I feel like nobody said that pussy would you say you have? Feminine or masculine? Well, I have Aaron's pussy, okay? <laughs> okay. And I, I have been I have been pussy. known as being a touch me not, but I'm not a touch me not. I'm a See? don't touch me if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's that's what uh, that's yeah. how I'm touching me. Like if you know what you're doing, I'm literally gonna tap a girl on the shoulder. Yeah. This is not working. Don't like, you know what I mean? It's it happened when we were on Atlanta, and I was like, "Oh, that song, like on Set It Off, like yeah, yeah." Oh my God, that was terrible. Let me out. Let me out. Yo, let me out. Let me out. Let me out. I can't believe that was a hell of a shower, man. Oh my God. Yeah, no, but stuff has not been that fantastic, to be honest. Because I feel like maybe has been touched enough. They don't. Maybe they must have broken. I don't know. Anyway, that's the last chapter, season six, episode three. Thank you for joining us and all of our cast members. See you next time. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to play the villain. I'ma keep this egg. I keep the shit a million. Must admit we lost the love and feeling. Now you want that old thing back? Adios. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Sayonara. Ellie, we try. Arrivederci. Don't ask why you leave.